All right. Um, number one, let me just start off with saying, by saying, you do not look like a boy. Um, the absence of makeup is not the absence of womanhood. Uh, secondly, I don't want to question your motives here. I I'm just going to dispute your hypothesis. Um, yes, there has been a dramatic increase in the amount of people who publicly identify as transsexual, the po uh, population that identifies as trans in any way, shape, or form, the, pop uh, the numbers of those who transition. Uh, but it's really very much down to economics. Um, this demand has been with us for quite some time. Uh, you can go back and, and look at instances of transness in history, the fact that they, um, the fact that there were uh, pagan male priestesses, forgive the bunny quotes, but um, riding pregnant mares, anyone with any basic knowledge of endocrinology will tell you what you can get from pregnant mares, though it's not very pleasant, you know, it's the best you have in Europe at, you know, 1200 AD until you figure out perhaps that hops or certain other herbals um, will have some effect. No, what's happened is there's been a dramatic improvement in the technology uh, of transition. So the results of transitioning are much more satisfying. The health risks, the cause, the social opprobrium are dropping dramatically. If you want to look at a society where there's already a high rate of social transition, there's very little opprobrium uh, against being trans, look at Thailand. Do you know what the incidence of social transition is estimated to be in Thailand? It's estimated to be 1 in 167. And that's just women who transition. You know, I, I don't know about, about you, your history. Um, maybe you always wanted to transition. Maybe you transitioned young. There's a lot of people who they went on doing the things that I did before transition, which is I kept saying, well, I won't look right. Um, you know, it'll just it, it'll just be a gong show. I mean, you know, I, I had a lot of bodily self-hate, and I still do. Um, but it's better now. Somewhat. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I don't know um, the most succinct way of putting this, but a trans woman who kind of knows herself but won't quite admit it to herself, who represses uh, her identity her entire life, who never tells anyone, never even, never even writes a note and kills herself, well, that's a female narrative, too. Um, what's happened is it's gotten easier to transition. If you want to look at the standards of care um, for transition medicine, which I still, um, you'll see my other video, I still think they're absolute and utter bullocks, um, the waiting times have dropped. The restrictions have dropped. So let's take it back to 1979. And I'm waiting a year to get HRT. No, wait, I'm not waiting a year. I'm not transitioning because I would be forced into a real life test. I hate to, um, oh god, you know what, I'm not even going to show the before photo, but, um, me no pass without hormones. Me no see girl and mirror without hormones. Not fair to make me, uh, dress high femme when, once again, you know, uh, the, the, uh, I get excited about wearing the, uh, the purple t-shirt, so, you know, it's, that, that's one. It's hazing. Um, the real life test is hazing, especially for hormone replacement therapy, because then you have, so many women have no chance of socially transitioning without it. Um, and so, the fact is, so many people would not start or backed out very quickly because being visibly gender variant, especially in 1979 when, hey, you know, I mean, nobody knows that trans people exist and gender fuck is not nearly as cool as it is today. Yeah, it's, um, it is designed to wash people out. And that's not a good thing. Uh, the, the, the constant argument is, well, the incidence of regret will be high. It's like, yeah, but that's, 
not giving anyone any experience of what it's like to be a woman, uh, to be perceived as a woman. It's giving people an experience of what it's like to be perceived as a man in a dress, um, which is not fun. Um, you know, I have I have friends who transitioned in girl mode, and it's you know it's oftentimes exceptionally stressful um, during those early months. <sighs> Where to where to continue? Um, oh yes, so 1979, and we go to any North American gender or clinic. Hey, I can't transition again. Why? Well, um, I have a girlfriend. I have a wonderful girlfriend. I'm a dyke. I can't transition because hey, normal transsexuals don't date women. Normal people are straight. That was the that was the assumption. That was the policy, um, and yeah. If you want to read uh, J. Mike's, uh, you know, the nickname that a lot of people in our community have for J. Michael Bailey's hate screed, the uh, the man who would be queen. Yeah. Um, apparently, if you don't want, if you don't want to be uh, in a relationship with men, if you don't like men in any way, shape, or form, you're just a pervert and a crossdresser who's using the best medical technology available. Um, oh, and I'm not operative. Uh, for reasons my own, what have you, it doesn't really matter, except for the fact that it gets brought up time and time again in questions of who should qualify as a woman and who shouldn't qualify. So yeah, I have to mention that they're not really um, friendly to me existing back then, and they are now. So, given that 25% of trans women identify as lesbian and only 23% of trans women identify as purely heterosexual, one, there are quite a few people who had to make up their history to transition. Um, and two, and yeah, and two, a lot of people were just stopped. Um, and that lowered the incidence of transition. Also, the um, a lot of people had to self-medicate back in those days because of these standards of care. You know, there were more people had to rely on workarounds as a percentage of the total number of transitioners. So that drives the, the statistics down. Oh, and there was a requirement that trans women go stealth. Um, these things are breaking down. The cost of transitioning, and I don't mean the dollar cost, I mean the social cost, the job discrimination, the murder rate, which, um, you know, most recent demographic studies, though we haven't updated the numbers, are probably about 10, uh, in the United States, 10 murders per 100,000 uh, trans people per year, which is about half again the national average, a little bit more. You know, it's, it's bad, but a lot of that is someone's in an at-risk situation, murder happens then, violent crime happens then, um, yeah, the, um, it's less likely to be a death sentence. It's less likely to cost you your entire, uh, professional situation. Oh, and that's one other interesting thing. The old standards of care, restrictive as they were, then forced transitioners to completely focus not on being the kind of women they wanted to be or the kind of men they wanted to be, but on being the kind of women and men the doctors demanded they be if they have any access whatsoever to medicine. Um, and so you'll have people who are so focused on those roles and so focused on that that they don't have you know, the, the mental and emotional capacity to self-evaluate. And that is why the incidence of regret, if anything, has been dropping. Uh, we have a 98% satisfaction rate, which I tend to think is pretty good. If you want to say, for example, that one in, well, let's be very, very generous to the concern, to the uh, the people who say that there's too much transitioning, you know, um, say that one in ten uh, people have a cisgender identity who get treatment. So what you do when you apply this treatment is you reduce the number of cases of gender dysphoria from nine, uh, in nine in a sample group to one in a sample group. So yeah, it's it's not a bad thing that people are transitioning. 
at a higher rate. It's an exceptionally good thing. I wouldn't be surprised if the incidence of transition goes up and up and up um, throughout our lifetimes. I mean, yes, once again, Thailand has 1 in 167 uh, as a percentage of the total, or as an incidence of the total female population who are trans women. It's getting more common every day, and it's not getting more common every day because of anime. Um, you know, as cute as Sailor Moon was, I always fell for, or, well, some of the girls from Sailor Moon were, I, I always fell for the Dark Deco Batman, and that was definitely not a place of ambiguous gender roles. <laughs> um, sorry, I should clarify, Poison Ivy from the Dark Deco Batman. Ooh. Now I'm thinking about Bruce Wayne. Out of my, out of my head image. Out of my head! Anyway, um... So yeah, it's... It's not increased atomism. I mean, there's, there's no more... Uh, there's no greater situation of isolation from society than... Knowing that everything around you is wrong. Um, and that no one would ever acknowledge it. In fact, they'd probably put you in hospital one way or uh, either the easy way or the hard way if you ever told them. Um, and really, given the choice between Thorazine and thoracic surgery, a lot of people would stay in the closet. It's that simple. Um, and as, as technology gets better, yes, the incidence will increase. Um, there's a reason there hasn't been a big change in incidence of being a uh, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Namely because there hasn't been a massive change in the technology of, uh, of, of sex. I, um, you know, uh, with the exception of, you know, the introduction of certain silicones and lubricants, it's, yeah, no. Um, that's why you see this massive jump of trans people as a percentage of the queer population. We're going through, um, we're going through a paradigm shift where we've moved from a system we're moving sorry we're we're still very much in a system where uh transition medicine is about protecting cis people from the possibility of trans people to a system where it's about granting trans people agency um and i'm not talking about the the individual frontline doctors often they're quite friendly but they have their own professional associations and people in positions of authority above them who do create metrics, uh, spoken and unspoken, that they have to adhere to. So I guess that's it. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, uh, one other quick point. If it, if it were anime, there would probably be a lot more trans lesbian anime out there than just the excellent Kashimashi Girl Meets Girl. Bye-bye. <laughs>